So first I'd like for you to just share with us um, why has uh, the topic of gender-based violence been on the government's agenda for the past year? So can you speak a little bit to that? Sure thing, Paulette, and hello everybody. Bonjour, Anine, salam alaikum. I'm on Michisagi territory and I wish I could be with you, but I'm joining you from my home in Peterborough, Kawartha. Gender-based violence uh, is not a new issue. Uh, it is not new to our government. Uh, we brought in the first federal strategy in Canada's history back in 2017. And today, what we've been able to support directly is about a billion dollars in supports over five years to frontline organizations, as well as various justice reforms. In the first couple days of the pandemic, my team and I got on the phone and we are so fortunate that folks like Paulette and so many others in the sector take our calls and answer our questions and reply to our texts because we asked what should we be focused on at the Department for Women and Gender Equality over the coming months and unanimously across the country you all said the same thing you said make sure that the last door that women children and non-binary folks knock on when they are able to flee violence and abuse is a door that's open to them, that is safe, where staff are paid and can provide the care and professional service that they need. So it was really those conversations in the first 48 hours, Paulette, with you and many like you across the country that uh, focused our government uh, across a range of issues, uh, specifically on this one, that not every home is a safe home and we better make sure that those who know how to do this work have the emergency supports they need as soon as possible. Thank you, Minister Monsef. Thank you. It really has been quite a partnership. Um, I think partnership is the right word to describe the kind of relationship that we've been able to have here at the Canadian Women's Foundation. And, and uh, that partnership has really grown over the years. I think that really placed us in this position of being able to respond um, uh, and activate ourselves quickly to be a continued partner during this pandemic. So thank you for the investments that you've made. And of course, you'll always hear from our sector that it's not enough, but that we're really concerned about what comes next. As you know, we've been doing some work around that uh, in terms of preparing the sector, sharing some knowledge. But what what is the plan post-pandemic? Could you talk a little bit about that? Well, right now, job one is getting Canadians through the pandemic. And you're right, Paulette, we can't do this without our partners. Uh, in those early days, had it not been for Women's Shelters Canada, for yourself at the Canadian Women's Foundation, we would not have been able to deliver the funds as quickly as we were able to to the front lines. That was really important to us. And because of those trusting relationships we had built, with the sector, we were able to put money into people's bank accounts within a matter of days. And I know this took a lot out of your team. And I know this is a big gathering for, for your board, outgoing and incoming, and all those who support you. Just that work that you did, particularly in the early days, it made a world of difference. We're getting our numbers now and some 700,000 women and children, non-binary folks in their hour of needs, not including Quebec have been able to seek the services and, and receive the services they need. And it's because of you. And on behalf of the Prime Minister and the Government of Canada, I want to say thank you, Chimigwech, merci, Tashakor. And these partnerships are going to enable us to continue to respond to COVID. There's another uh, $50 million that we're rolling out now as we speak uh, in emergency funds. And I thank you, Paulette, and your team for being uh, one of those partners delivering those funds for us. In the coming days, we'll be announcing an, an additional $100 million to provide supports to front lines. This is three-year funding. This is meant to support organizations to respond to COVID, but also build back better. What happens in that path to build back better? You heard the prime minister say in the uh, speech from the throne that women's safety is the foundation for Canada's recovery. He referred to the National Action Plan on Gender-Based Violence, which we are making uh, progress on with provinces and territories. We met with them a few weeks ago and we've made a significant step forward with the signed declaration 
that we're all going to work on a national action plan together. In the meantime, making sure that we prevent the spread of COVID, that we roll out the vaccine as quickly and as equitably as possible remains top of mind. And I know there's also a, a pre-budget consultation process happening right now until the third week of February. So if anybody would like to provide input to our government about she recovery, supports for the vulnerable, supports for women, that intersectional approach, this is a moment for you to go online to the Finance Canada website and make sure that your voice is heard and know that we will too continue to carry your voice. Thank you, Minister. Thank you for answering the call and stepping up the, on these investments, which we know are important during this emergency. And I, I, two more things I wanted to say to you. Well, first thing I want to say to you that this is the Canadian Women's Foundation's 30th year. So we are celebrating our 30th anniversary. Yes. And when our founders thought about that 30 years ago, our founding mothers, you know, one of the things for them was, you know, what, what can we do in, in our philanthropy to actually um, uh, bring an end to gender inequality in this country? Uh, and to bring about equality uh, for women and girls and gender diverse folks. So, um, you know, there's been a movement to establish a, action, a national action plan on gender-based violence. And I thought maybe I'd give you a minute or so to talk about that work, uh, what, uh, what that's shaping up to look like and uh, what we hope to accomplish as a result of that plan. Well, whatever progress we make on this file, Paulette, it's because of those who've come before us. And congratulations on your 30th. Thank this you. Is, this is a hard year, but it's important to celebrate these very big milestones. And yes, the we owe it to the very smart folks who came before us to do right by the opportunities and the paths they've created for us. And the National okay. Action Plan on Gender-Based Violence is one of those important milestones, too. This took decades of advocacy by survivors, by experts on the front lines to get us to this point. And in that meeting with my provincial and territorial counterparts, we did reflect on the fact that this was the 38th meeting of the federal, provincial, territorial ministers responsible for the status of women. And this was the first time that we had all come to a formal agreement on a national action plan on gender-based violence. We recognized that it took far too long but we also take very seriously that it is now and this particular moment in time that has brought us all onto the same page. And my colleagues in provinces and territories are really wonderful to work with. We were able to build good relationships with the federal strategy, establish trust, and of course, respect for their jurisdictions. The majority of the jurisdiction on this file is with provinces and territories. And then we were able to further strengthen those relationships with the COVID response, actually. So we, we shared lists and lists of organizations so that we could cross-check and cross-reference so that we didn't need to put people through an application process. Those relationships, uh, we are now at that stage where, you know, we've spoken with some 1,500 experts during COVID uh, about how to go about the National Action Plan. And an interesting consensus is emerging across the country. You have all said that ensuring that this strategy is centered around the experiences of Black, Indigenous, racialized folks, those with disabilities and exceptionalities, language minorities, those in rural communities, seniors and youth and LGBTQ2 folks is key. You've told us that ensuring the stability of the sector is top of mind for you, and it is for us too. You've told us to continue to focus on prevention, but also ensure that survivors receive the care, the dignity, and the respect that they deserve, whether it's seeking health services or in their pursuit for justice. We've also heard that it's important to ensure that there's supports for men and boys in addition to extra support for women's and equity-seeking organizations. So my provincial counterparts have heard this, those in the territories have heard this, and we're gonna work very closely with my colleague, Minister Bennett, uh, the minister responsible for Crown and Indigenous relationships to make sure that the National Action Plan on Gender-Based Violence is working in parallel with the calls for justice, 
for the Missing and Murdered Indigenous Women and Girls uh, 2S inquiry, and that the two are enabling each other as they move forward. So far, the National Action Plan is moving along a 10-year timeline which provides us with both immediate opportunities to act, but also a 10-year plan to address the deeply rooted causes of this entirely preventable crime in our country. Well, thank you, Minister. Uh, my time is up <laughs> and it does go fast, uh, but I am just wanting to let you know how appreciative I am, we are, with the time that you've taken to, uh, to to be with me today to answer my questions and to do it in such a comprehensive way so that uh, it's well said, very clear, and it's also quite obvious about your the passion that you bring to this work, the respect you have for those that you're working with, as well as the future that we're creating for generations to come. So thank you so much for, for doing this and uh, for taking the time today.